What is Marvin Hagler's legacy to you? Well, first of all, when I heard about this and it was unexpected, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, I'm not used to reacting that way when athletes I admire pass. But I, I feel like a lot of people in my generation, and Stephen and I are more or less of the same generation, um, this one hit hard. People, my eldest daughter said, yeah, Dad, because it makes you feel old. <laughs> because Hagler was the 80s. Like, Hagler in the 1980s, it's hard to explain to people who weren't in that generation, was Mike Tyson before there was Mike Tyson. He was not only the best pound for pound, but he was the baddest man on the planet, even though he was a middleweight. This guy was, I, I, like, I, he, and he came up the hard way. Joe Frazier, the great heavyweight champion, once told Hagler, you have three strikes against you. You're black, you're southpaw, and you're good, meaning it's going to be time, hard for you to find fights. So you know what Hagler had to do? He had to go, he liked to Philadelphia at one point in his career. He's from Brockton, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where... Rocky Marciano was from. He went to Philadelphia for all the other avoided black middleweights of the day. Bobby Boogaloo Watts, Willie the Worm Monroe, Eugene Cyclone Hart, Sugar Ray Seals, all these guys, and lost to a bunch of them the first time around and went right back in there with them and beat them. And then some of them he fought a third time and knocked them out. And by the time he emerged from that, he's ready for a title shot, and he cleaned out the middleweight division involved in some of the biggest fights in that division's history, usually winning them when he lost to Sugar Ray Leonard. He didn't think he'd lost, and many people don't think he really lost that fight. Stephen A., he never came back. Pride. He, and he went to Italy, became an action movie star in Italy. I used to bump into Hagler, who was the nicest guy in the world, and he would speak English with a thick Italian accent. Yep. And then eventually he leaves Italy, and like his accent kind of goes. He was an original and, and an enormous cultural icon of the 1980s. <sighs> Greatest first round in boxing history, as far as I'm concerned, is Hagler versus Hearns. Hearns won that round, but he instantly lost the fight the minute because he was, uh, I mean, he, he gave everything he had, and Hagler kept coming. And obviously, Hagler put him to sleep in the third round. We understand that. Um, but what stands out to me about Hagler, outside of him owning the division, cleaned out the middleweight division, 80 to 87, undisputed middleweight champion of the world, 62 and 3, 61 or 62 and 3, never, ever, ever got knocked out. Um, in his career, avenged the loss to Vito Anafermo. You remember that when he when, when he came in and a draw. Them. They gave him a draw that he should have won. That he should have right. won. And then he came in. It was no draw the next time. Finished him off. Um, but what really stood out in my mind was at a time when boxing, obviously, we we we, we lamented the state of affairs as it pertained to promoters Max and the control that they had and what have you. And he got he got robbed in his eyes. He thought the split decision loss to Sugar Ray Leonard. He thought he obviously deserved that victory and then years later obviously Sugar Ray wanted to fight him Sugar Ray wanted a rematch obviously people were clamoring for it he said no because he felt like you're the champion somebody should have to come and take it from you you don't give it to somebody else I was the constant aggressor I kept coming I deserved to win that fight that was his mentality and a lot based on a lot of pride and principled you know this better than me when he was stuck on something if he believed it you were not going to change his mind and I had the pleasure of meeting him one time in Vegas. And, and I, I was the one that brought it up. He didn't bring it up. But he still to that day felt that he won that fight. I can't repeat he, some of the things he's told right. me and in he language swore, he's and used. he swore he would never fight again because he felt that the sport disrespected him by taking the title from him to Sugar Ray Leonard. But he was marvelous in every sense of the word. And then when you had a ring, uh, an announcer that refused to call him marvelous, he legally changed, changed his, his name, name to marvelous. marvelous. So you had no choice but to call him marvelous. Sugar Ray he was special. Sugar Ray Leonard was, special. was supposed to be, like, he was the next Ali in terms of fame and popularity, and he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and Hagler always watched him as a guy who had things handed to him. Sugar Ray Leonard, one of the greatest yes, fighters of all time, but Hagler okay. resented the fact that he was so blue-collar. Sugar Ray turned pro, made a ton of money. Hagler didn't. They fought for the title on the same card the first time. Sugar Ray wins it. Hagler gets ripped off in a draw. You know, every step of the way, Ray had it better than he did, he felt. Yeah. So when they negotiated for their fight, Sugar Ray said, you get more money, which Hagler wanted, but I want it 12 rounds instead of 15. And had it been 15, Hagler would have won the fight. Yeah. But his pride was so hurt by that, he never fought again. Right. Never fought In again. spite of being offered close to probably $20 million yes. for a rematch yeah. back then. He was a principled man. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.